Now, since I have Stage Falls just chomping at the bit, we're going to play a game called Monologue Hotspot, where we're going to tell a series of stories that they're going to be interrupted by the other performers as they are inspired. To get them going, we're going to have to give them a starting topic. I believe since it's comfort food night, I thought creature comforts would be the perfect starting topic. Any questions? Any strong feelings? Any huzzas left? Perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Did you say bully? <laughs> Guys, this isn't, wasn't my plan. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Performing a Creature Comforts monologue hotspot. The one, the only, Stage Falls. So uh, my mom's friend posted on Facebook a picture of her sonogram, and I shit you not, her baby looks exactly like a turkey. <laughs> Sonograms are interesting because they can take you to places where you don't really want to go. You're sitting there and you're staring at this little tiny black and white screen that looks like a TV from the 1960s. And they start rubbing this jelly all... So when I was a kid, all we had was one of those little black and white TVs in the living room. And if, if you couldn't get the picture, I had to stand there and be the bunny ears for the thing. Some of my favorite shows to watch when I was growing up were mostly black and white shows. I Love Lucy, The Munsters, Adam's Family. I'm starting to notice a trend here of like weird shows that I used to watch in, in uh, black and white. And also, whenever that they had Nick at Night back in the day, most of those shows were from the... The day that I realized that I was not normal was a very, very large revelation for me because I thought I was completely absolutely the most normal person in the world. But then everybody always gave me these weird looks and they were like. I remember in kindergarten, my teacher said, everyone give a thumbs up if you're here. And I did this and then everyone pointed <laughs> and pointed out to me the fact that I was very, very strange. Hitchhiking is difficult because basically you're needing to put your life in someone else's hands that's driving 75 miles an hour and all you've got is a thumb to indicate that you want them to endanger you. And so for me, for me, this doesn't mean I want to hitchhike. It means kill me slowly and make me anticipate it. Facebook's the like button could have been a different sort of it could, I mean, it does just say like, but they have to give the thumbs up as if everything's okay. And if you say something on there, and no, like if you want to just agree with someone. So uh, the thumbs up came about in, uh, uh, in like the Coliseum days, you know. Uh, if the, the emperor gave the thumbs up, it meant carnage. And if he gave thumbs down, it meant the, that uh, there wasn't going to be any death. And... You know, it came about, my teacher and I had an argument about that because from the perspective of the... Arguments with your parents never go well because they're bigger than you and they think that you're not as smart as they are. And so basically there's a... Di I remember one of the first arguments that I ever had with my parents. We had to stay late and I had detention and I didn't want to tell my mother that I had detention so we missed the bus. Then as soon as she came and picked us up, she was like, why did you miss the bus? And I said, I don't know. Why didn't we? I remember the most horrifying time I was in detention and I was actually passing notes in detention and writing very bad things about my teacher who was sitting next to me, and she found it. Teachers, teachers can come in many shapes, sizes, and I found out flavors, because you can learn, you can learn. I will never forget my English teacher. She was the sexiest person I have ever seen. She was just curvy, beautiful, and everybody in that classroom paid attention to whatever the hell she wrote on the board, to whatever the hell she was doing on the computer. We all paid attention to her because she was just jaw-droppingly, amazingly gorgeous. But the catch of it all was... <laughs> My jaw got dislocated one time. <laughs> and it was not the result of someone hitting me. It was actually the result of me trying to eat too large of a sandwich. 
I didn't realize that a Dagwood sandwich was actually like too big for the human mouth to encompass. You have to be like an anaconda to do a Dagwood. The first time I saw the movie Anaconda was with my friends, it was about 1996, and we were all really confused as how Ice Cube got a movie career <laughs> automatically from that movie. I mean, we could have, it got him next Friday, and I, I, we were fine with that, but... It, so, the first time I was, like, given permission to watch an R-rated movie in the theater, you've got to understand I was already 19 years old at the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I went to see the Stephen King movie Thinner, which was, it was an alright movie, okay? Uh, it was an alright movie, but at the end... Thinner is what I always get when people answer the question that I ask, what can I do to make myself better? Unfortunately, Thinner is not something that I am that quick to do. I want to eat and eating is something that I enjoy and it's something that I love and I don't want to exercise. It's something I don't enjoy. So what I need to do in my life is prioritize in order to allow myself to become thinner and yet... When it's this freaking cold outside, I don't want to move at all. No matter how much I need to exercise, it's not gonna happen. And that snow falling from the sky that everyone's really excited about, it's going to turn to ice on the roads. It just is. Call me a pessimist, call me a Grinch, but that's how it is. And I'm just going to stay in bed. That's, that's what I want to do, is stay in bed during the holidays. I always thought it would be really cool that at the mall, if they had on the opposite side, the Grinch who took away presents from the kids who were being bad like while they were waiting for Santa. Like if they were like, hold on, we're going to go to the other Hail side. Santa. Hail Santa. You'll put coal in your stockings and then the Grinch will just steal your Christmas away. Don't, don't be. Okay. My orchestra class, my orchestra teacher would always make fun of me. Every year he gave me a new nickname, and this one particular year we did a Christmas song debut melody thing, and we did You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. So he decided to go, you're a mean one, Cacherice, and it stuck for the whole year that I've been at high school. So I told him, you know what, it's my senior year, I'm never gonna see you again. Greenwich Mean Time, why is it mean time? <laughs> Why can't it be Greenwich jovial time, or Greenwich affable time, or Greenwich happy time? It's always got to be mean time. What does that mean? I... In the meantime, there's a story that I always wanted to tell. And the first time that I thought of it was probably right about now. So... <laughs> and that's when... <laughs> It came to a screeching halt in my brain. That story will be told from years to come. Screech was almost my favorite character on Saved by the Bell because he was a nerd and yet at the same time he had that voice, that dulcet tone, that wonderful voice that always made me go, what? I mean, it was absolutely the best thing. You had your pretty girl, you had your jock, you had your smart people. Screech was just the one who didn't fit in any of the whole. I think if, if anyone could narrate my life, I would want it to be either Morgan Freeman or Christopher Walken. I think it would have to be Christopher Walken. And that, makes, that reminds me of, of, have you ever seen the, the comparison between the Oxford comma, the Walken comma, and the Shatner comma? <laughs> I want to live my life with the walk-in comma. It's, it's the most unpredictable. Yeah, it... Walk-in closets are interesting because you can put anything in them. You can make them a book, book depository, you can make them where you put clothes, you can put shoes, you can do anything, but the idea is that you're immersing yourself in the... So for about a year in high school, I lived in my closet because I was using my bedroom as a, uh, as a workplace because I didn't have enough room. So I, I had a cot in there and everything. And it was interesting and it got, you know, claustrophobic because it's a freaking closet. But I had a lot of fun in there. Uh, you know, I just slept. Why is claustrophobia not a fear of Santa? 
Why is it a fear of enclosed spaces? It doesn't really make any sense to me. Enclosed space fear should be like, like no spaceophobia or lack of aerophobia. I mean, why does it have to be claustrophobia? I, is this another thing that, that, that the Catholics stole from the pagans? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. So, so right now, I'm thinking that claustrophobia needs to be renamed. If anybody can think of anything, I'm all out there. I'm just absolutely Whenever I'm feeling claustrophobic, I like to sit down with my favorite comfort food, which is usually pizza or a hamburger. Or even like, you know those Dutch cookies that come in the tin, like your grandma used to have? Those are really good. And so is also oatmeal cream pies, even those moon pies. Ever deep fry a moon pie? It's delicious. Just melts in your mouth one bite at a time. So I've heard of deep fried turkey before, right? This whole tur turfluckin' thing, turkey with a duck and a, and a chicken in it, and then there's like a, a tur turthulu, like calamari and turkey stuffed in it. Whatever your comfort food is, let that be your comfort food, because man, if you can eat all of that, go for it. <laughs> that is, go for it. Woo!